Hi, um, glory to the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Um, this is going to be a really short video. And in this video, I just wanted to read a um, short scripture passage and then reflect on it for a second. So this uh, is from 1 Cor one Corinth 1 Corinthians uh, 2, chapter 2. It's the beginning of the chapter. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstrations of the spirit of power, that your faith should not be the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So this verse is very central to apologetics or, and uh, to uh, spreading the gospel or any form of evangelism. Um, I think this is so crucial because um, the, the gospel, grace, etc., mercy, love, all these things, that, that as they relate to God, they're not just something read about, they're something experienced and something lived. Um, for example, um, there was this uh, YouTube channel called The Orthodoxy Lunatic. It still exists, actually. But the video, I don't, I have, I don't have access to the video it was talking about. It's uh, in the video... He was talking about why he, as a teenage Protestant, chose to become Eastern Orthodox. And in that video, he also described his experience um, going to Roman Catholic confession um, as a Protestant. And when he went to confession, he, he, he didn't really know what to expect, however... Um, but when he finally went, the words of absolution were said over him. He felt this kind of power or grace or whatever you want to call it that came over him. Um, just the kind of forgiveness that comes into someone's heart. It's unlike anything he's that he'd ever felt before. And I've, when, whenever I've been to the mystery of confession in the Orthodox Church, I felt the same exact way. So that is something that really convinces me that in order to uh, experience the gospel or the mercy of God or the grace of God, um, you, you can't come to it from an intellectual level. You can't uh, come to it just in a scientific way and try to prove things. That's not how it works. It works through experience. It's not something that needs to be proven in a sense. The grace of God is something that is real and it's moving. It doesn't need you to defend it. It doesn't need anyone to defend it. It will save souls regardless if you are involved or not. It's something that covers the entire world in, in a sense because God is present in all places. Not that he is everything, but that he um, covers the entire world universe he created everything um, and no one is ever too far from the grace of God so I'd say that's the first thing to keep in mind when you're trying to evangelize people that you can't force them to convert and you can't you also have to keep in mind um, that it's God who ultimately does the work and not the evangelist or Christian or um, and the other thing to keep in mind is that the main proof that Jesus said that would be given, the sign that would be given for people to know that he was saying was true, is the, the resurrection. And this is proven in a historical sense and in a scientific sense that can be studied and examined through the Shroud of Turin. And there's also some arguments that can be given um, based on uh, the historical case for how the apostles uh, spread the gospel and they, would, they wouldn't have lied about something that they would be killed for. 
and all those kinds of arguments, but I, I haven't really gotten into those, but the um, thing is, the Shroud of Turin, if you, you're looking for a rationalistic argument for the resurrection of Christ that proves basically the entire Christian religion, that is all you need to look at. And for some people, even that's not enough. Um, because, like, I was really young. Um, I was, like, 19 or 18 years old just looking at the evidence for the Shroud of Turin, and it really just floored me how strong that the the uh, case can be made that it actually it was the burial cloth of Christ, 3D information on the Shroud, etc. Um, but at the same time, even though we have proof that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, people will deny it anyway. So um, they'll, they won't even, I rarely hear atheists or any kind of skeptic talk about the shadow turn. So the focus is, should never be on getting someone to accept a rationalistic position. The focus is assuming we have to come from the position that everyone already knows that, um, that, um, God is real because that's what Romans says. We can't deny the scripture that says that, um, and just to get them to change, pray to God to get people to change their hearts, to, uh, have an impact on the world. Because even if people saw Jesus's miracles and they still killed him. So, um, I think that's all I wanted to say in this video. And in the, the description box of this video, there will be a link to something from the Roman Catholic, uh, well, it's not Roman Catholic, it's a Ukrainian Catholic pamphlet. Even though I'm Eastern Orthodox, I'm sharing this pamphlet because I think it's one of the best short summaries of the evidence for the Shroud of Turin. And I have that in the description. And also... And it's almost Sunday, so everyone have a blessed and restful Sunday. And everyone remember that um, I hope everyone experiences the grace of God in a profound way. And and I, I what I want to say is I think the best thing you have to do whenever you're preaching to someone or sharing Bible messages with someone is to um, have humility within your heart. And even St. Paul said he was the chief of sinners. So, I mean, I've had conversions in the past. I used to be a traditionalist Catholic. Now I'm uh, Eastern Orthodox. I've been that way for two years. My um, anniversary of my uh, two years is the day after tomorrow. That's Monday, so that's June 1st. Let me look at my calendar. Yeah, that is June 1st, Monday. That's when I was chrismated, so... Um, I'm grateful for every second I've had as... Um, as Eastern Orthodox, because I felt so much more at peace with God. Traditionalist Catholicism is not the kind of religion that anyone wants to be in if they want to maintain their sanity, so... Um, thank you all for listening, and I hope to do more videos like this in the future. Um, thing is, I don't want to, part of me doesn't want to start like an internet quote-unquote ministry, because that is a really quick way to make yourself really prideful, and I want to stay away from that. One of my philosophies is I can never really want to take any money for anything religious I do. That's why any religious book I write or, uh, or pamphlet or, um, or poetry book, religious poetry book has to be always in the public, in the public domain. And I rarely want to take any money from it. Um, as little as possible if I can. So yeah, thanks everyone for listening. I'm going to have to edit this video a lot just to, because I, had long pauses, but we'll see what happens. Thank you.